Hi, this is John Western with Affinia 3D. Hey, have you ever had a car where you were working on it and you had the one side of a part, but not the other side of the part, the left or right, and uh, but you needed to replicate it? Well, I can show you how we're going to use this 3D scanner from Shining 3D, the Einscan HX, to be able to scan this part and get its mirror. Stay tuned. All right, so we're going to go through a few steps here with our Einscan HX um, just to review how to scan uh, an object. Here I'm using a uh, turntable, just a manual turntable. It's got target markers on there. And I'm using some blue tack, or you could use uh, alien tape or some putty or double stick, double stick tape uh, just to get my object uh, on, affixed to the turntable. I like to put it in a vertical fashion so that I can get basically the front and the back, or if you want to call it the top and the bottom at the same time, you'll find that that actually helps with alignment when you're doing multiple scans, saving them as multiple projects and aligning them together. So we'll save it as a file name here for my project. I'm going to select medium detail. I usually do medium detail. High detail is just creates a very large file size. Um, my object's black, so I'm going to select black as my color. Uh, I could do reflective, I could do normal. You could actually scan something that's chrome with the Einscan HX in laser mode. And uh, as I start my scan, I'm in a preview mode. I just want to make sure that I can see distortion, that I can see the object basically uh, uh, disturbing the lines. And as I hit play, which is the play button on the back, it'll start scanning. And as I'm scanning, I need to be able to see four target markers at any given time, the scanner does that is, uh, to be able to, to achieve alignment uh, and to capture the scene. So as we lose tracking, it's just very easy to kind of go back to where you've had tracking before and, uh, uh, and start scanning. It'll tell you whether you're too close, you're too far, there's a meter off on the left uh, that will show you um, it, by being green or by being red or, or blue uh, telling you how close you are and uh, as we get our first scan here you'll notice that I'm getting a lot of the turntable because I'm the turntable's black that's not a big problem we're gonna go ahead and edit that out and uh, so we're just gonna finish up the scan So at this point is when we're going to uh, create a cutting plane where we will actually delete everything that's on the surface of the turntable and below. So I'm selecting by target marker. So I'm just going through and you can actually see the target markers are just scanned. I hold the shift key and then hit the left mouse button and to select those. Once I have them selected, I can move this plane up and down if I want to, but it looked pretty good where it was at. So here now, uh, I am going to use a paintbrush tool. I'm going to zoom in with my mouse wheel and just select a portion of uh, what I actually wanted to scan. And then I'm going to hit Connected Domain and then hit Inverse uh, it, so that I can select everything except for what I'm trying to scan. Then I hit Delete. And uh, now at this point, I can go ahead and generate my point cloud. As I'm doing that, I just uh, take my uh, object and reposition it and then go to my project groups hit the plus sign here and I'm actually going to add uh, a new project which I did using the same settings as my previous uh, project I'll hit the preview again and start scanning so it's lather rinse repeat
can zoom in so we get a little better look of what we're seeing of uh, the object we're scanning. And we're going to go ahead and generate our cutting plane. We deleted that, did our connected domain, reversed it, inverted it, deleted it. Now here, I'm going to just edit out. I've got a little bit of, uh, sometimes in, in valleys and such, you'll get some uh, reflect, reflections, which will uh, give some debris uh, through our scan. If I hold the shift key, with my paintbrush here, I can select some of that um, and it'll turn it red. And I can continue to select more. I hit delete there. And I've got a little more debris that I want to clean up. Now at this point, you'll see that I actually got some of the uh, model that I don't want to delete. So I can hit the control key and the left mouse button and highlight it and it reverses um, or cancels the edit on that part of it. So now it looks pretty good. So I'm going to apply that edit. And once again go ahead and uh, optimize my point cloud and set up for another project. While there's the two projects visible, you can see they're not aligned. And now I flip it into a third position, scanning it one more time. And once again, generating that cut plane, selecting part of the object, inverting it. I could spend some more time cleaning this up, but it's going to, uh, we're going to merge it with another uh, scan. One thing I kind of noticed here is that in, in my cutting off of the, uh, uh, the cut plane, it actually cut part of the model out that I needed. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, do another scan just to uh, fill in those gaps. But we're going to go ahead and uh, I could delete my scan at this point. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just save it after it's optimized. I'm going to go ahead and do alignment here. The software will automatically align, uh, but you can do manual alignment as well. But I just uh, do a fixed by selecting one of those projects and then do a floating and then float the one project to the other for alignment. Click next and keep moving until you're uh, fully aligned. And even after we've got to this step, we can still edit. And so there was a uh, marker box uh, that was still being visible. So I'm going to select that project that has that object in it. Uh, I used a lasso tool to lasso it, turned it red, and hit delete key to remove it. And so I'm going to highlight the rest of the projects because they're all aligned now. And I've got a lot of markers out there. I can turn those markers off to give me a better view of what I've got. But I'm going to create that one more project here just because I know I've got some holes uh, there of what I cut off from, uh, from before. So again, this is just repeating our process.
select part of the object, do connect to domain, do invert, delete. And I have a little more cleanup that I like to do here and just being a little particular, I guess. Um, I'm using my paintbrush and uh, zooming out to make the paintbrush a little bit bigger. And I got a couple of little spikes that I'm just cleaning off. this uh, generate point cloud and then we're gonna go back in and do a realignment here since I've already aligned a lot of the projects I'm just gonna align this last project uh, to the first project and it will align it to all the projects And now we can see is that we've got some of those areas filled in. I'm going to turn off some of these markers so we get a little better view. Yep, things are filled in. Uh, I'm kind of noticing though I got a little, little something that's not part of part of what we were actually scanning. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and get that cleaned up. So I've selected a paintbrush, hold the shift key, and as I'm selecting here, what you're going to find is that I've actually got to get the layer selected that has that, or the project that has that uh, blurb inside of there. So I'm turning on my projects to find out until which one has it, and there it is, project one. Project one has just a little extra blurb in it. And because we have overlap, um, I can just basically delete this and let the other ob uh, projects overlap that and that'll clean that up. So I hit the delete key, get rid of that little blurb. Click apply edit. And I'm just going to turn on those other projects. Bingo bango, we're looking pretty good. Now here we'll go ahead and mesh the model. And we've got two options. We can do uh, unwatertight or watertight. Here I'm showing you is that uh, the max triangles, it defaults to 20 million triangles. That's a lot. I kind of go to 10 million triangles just to reduce the size of the file. and uh, meshing now. And take a, uh, take a look at what our scam looks like. And it looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna go now, the next screen we hear is simplification. Uh, this will reduce our file size. And I like to get my file sizes uh, 10 megabytes or less or 15 megabytes or less and here we've uh, simplified this and you can see it hasn't materially changed the object itself so the the algorithm here really does a nice job of deleting triangles where it can now with this portion here we're going to create some features so that we can align this object to a uh, uh, to a world plane so I'm creating a plane here and I'm going to do that by a best fit. Now these are curved surfaces. It's best if you got a flat surface, but I'm basic. I just want to basically get this into an alignment uh, here. So I'm just going to slap a plane the best way it can in that area. So it's not perfect, but it's 
It's not a problem. And we're going to create another plane that's uh, basically vertical to that or perpendicular. Click create. And now with two planes, what I can do is I can create a line by the intersection of those two planes. So I'll select plane uh, one, select plane two, click create. And now there's a line that's uh, created where those two planes intersect. Now there's a third item that I need to be able to do an alignment, and that's a point. And I'm going to select that by just uh, clicking on a point. And right here in this corner, that's fine. So I'm going to click Create. And I'm going to show you the feature list here of what we've created. We've created two planes, a point, and a line. Now if we go to Measurement, we can do the 3, 2, 1 movement system. And I've selected plane one, line one, and point one. And I'm changing my uh, constraints to see about best fitting my uh, object into that plane. And so now I've got with a Z minus and a Y plus as my constraints. Looks pretty good. So I'm going to close this. We'll go ahead and save. Save it as an STL file. And uh, we're never going to scale. Uh, that's making your scan larger or smaller. And for any kind of reverse engineering, you don't want to do that right here, at least in my my uh, vision. But um, so here we are. This is our output item. Um, now next, we're going to show you how to do the mirroring. So back under uh, in the progress in the post processing, we can go to mirror, and we've got some instructions up here in the top. Uh, hold the shift key and the left mouse button to draw uh, a central axis. You can keep the initial mesh or not. That's not a, it's your choice. So I'm just going to go basically halfway into the object um, while it's in a basically a vertical position and try to match that vertical position. It's not, it's, it, you basically don't need to have a perfection on that um, because it's just going to flip or mirror our original scan. And you can see that here does a fantastic job of that. And there it is, our, there's our mirror. And how did it do? That looks really pretty good.